I want to finish talking up. I want to finish talking about the relationship between connective tissue and connective tissue diseases as it regards the hormone estrogen. We'll do that. Uh, we'll finish that up today. Then tomorrow, I want to take a little bit of a little break away from our discussion about arginine and protein and connective tissue. I want to talk a little bit about Robin Williams' suicide and a little bit about depression in general, according to the CDC. One out of ten Americans reports that they're depressed. Nearly one out of four kids reports that they are depressed as well. And I want to talk about depression in, from a nutritional perspective and a non-nutritional perspective. The last time I was really depressed when I, was when I was in my 20s. Uh, and I discovered a couple things about depression that helped me out a lot. And perhaps it will help you or someone you care about as well. So if you're dealing with depression or you know somebody who's dealing with depression, really sometimes it's as hard on people who care about the depressed person as it is on the depressed person. Uh, if you know somebody who's depressed or if you're dealing with depression, tune in tomorrow. We'll be talking about some nutritional as well as non-nutritional strategies for dealing with that. And then we'll get back to talking about arginine and connective tissue. Arginine, by the way, has antidepressant effects too. And arginine also has uh, some interesting mental health properties. And then arginine also is important for making a unique hormone that has antidepressant properties and it's also important for the heart and the blood vessels and sexual performance as well. It's an active ingredient in libido enhancing formulations. Uh, and arginine is super important for all of these issues. And arginine also has an, play, uh, plays an important role, as we'll find out tomorrow or the next day. Uh, arginine also has an important role in stabilizing and improving the health of connective tissue. Connective tissue diseases are really, really common. Even if we don't have an official diagnosis of lupus or scleroderma or rheumatoid arthritis, as we get older, it is pretty typical for the connective tissue to begin to break down and connective tissue fibers to begin to grow inappropriately. Connective tissue, as we said, is made up of three parts. You got fibers, you got goo, and you got the cells that make the fiber and goo. That's pretty much it. That's our connective tissue. Connective tissue makes up 40% or so of the body. So, well, uh, at least half of the body, or, or close to half of the body, is made up for, of these types of cells. They're called fiber-making cells, or technically fibroblasts. And these fiber-making cells make fibers and they make goo. And that's pretty much the connective tissue in the body, cells and fibers and goo. And if you've got a connective tissue disease, like all disease, it has its core, it has its root in the cells that are making the connective tissue. In the case of connective tissue diseases, there's probably a hundred different diagnoses of different types of connective tissue diseases. There's even something called mixed connective tissue disease. But it's all the same thing. It's all the same cause. It's messed up cells. Connective tissue is made in cells. Cells get sick and connective tissue disease shows up. That's it, period. You can call it rheumatoid arthritis if it's in the joints. You can call it fibrosis if it's in the uterus or the lungs. You can call it sarcoidosis if it's in the muscles. You can call it scleroderma if it's in the skin. But it's the same thing. Sick cells making sick tissue. All disease is cell disease. In the case of connective tissue disease, the cells are either producing too much connective tissue, and that's going to show up as fibrosis, fibroid cysts, growths of some kind, fibers being extruded in excess and depositing in various tissues. In the muscles, they'll call it sarcoidosis. In the circulatory system, they'll call it vasculitis. In the breast or the uterus or the lungs, they'll call it fibrosis. But the bottom line is it's the same thing. It's the same disorder. And from a healing perspective, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter if it's in the lungs. It doesn't matter if it's in the skin. It doesn't matter if it's in the digestive tract. It doesn't matter if it's in the joints. It doesn't matter if it's in the uterus. It doesn't matter if it's in the breast. It's the same problem. Scleroderma is a classic connective tissue disease that features the laying down or the deposition of fibers typically in the skin. Scleroderma means hardening of the skin. Sclerosis or sclera refers to hardening. Derma means skin. So you can think of scleroderma as a skin fibrosis, but scleroderma can really occur anywhere. Like all connective tissue diseases, if you've got connective tissue, that's a place where you can have a connective tissue disease. Typically, scleroderma will occur in the digestive system. Up to 90% of scleroderma patients have some kind of digestive symptomology. And if you've got a digestive, uh, a digestive aspect or a digestive component to your scleroderma, you've got big problems. First of all, scleroderma is an autoimmune disease, so it's initiated, 
It starts off as a digestive problem, and then it turns around and forms this vicious circle where the digestive system ends up being a victim of the fibrosis, and you get more digestive problems, and more fibrosis, and more digestive problems, and more fibrosis, and this typical downward spiral of disease and degeneration occurs, all starting off with the digestive system. Heartburn is an extremely common symptom for scleroderma patients. Trouble swallowing, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, incontinence, fecal incontinence, not good. Scleroderma has an autoimmune component, the fiber making cells, the fibroblasts become defective because of an attack on, an attack from the immune system, but as far as healing goes, it doesn't matter. Cells are sick, cells are broken, cells are defective, that's it. The medical model is going to have you looking here, and looking there, and looking to, and looking fro, and looking hither, and looking thither, with its hundreds of different labels. They'll call it Sjogren's, they'll call it rheumatoid, they'll call it Peyronie's, they'll call it mixed connective tissue disease. I love that one. That's like the Whitman sampler pack of connective tissue disease, where any connective tissue can be affected. How ironic is that? They actually call it mixed connective tissue disease. Basically, they don't know what the heck's going on. At the end of the day, whether it's fibrosis or vasculitis or scleroderma, at the end of the day, it's sick fiber-making cells, sick fibroblasts, sick, sad, wounded cells. And there's only three things that cause sick, sad, wounded cells. Starvation, lack of nutrition, lack of the mighty 90 nutrients, suffocation, lack of oxygen, and toxification, accumulation of sugar, and accumulation of carbon dioxide, and accumulation of all the crap we put in our body, including the prescription drugs they give us to treat the scleroderma and the, fur, the connective tissue disease in the first place. And then, of course, subsequent inflammation, and then more starvation, suffocation, and toxification. So what do we do? How can we handle it? Well, it's not that hard. And if you've been listening to The Bright Side, you probably know exactly what I'm going to say. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got a line open for you at 855-660-4261. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, so connective tissue diseases. We're talking about uh, all the different connective tissue diseases. They're all basically the same thing. There's hundreds of different types of connective tissue disease, Sjogren's syndrome, Sjogren syndrome rheumatoid arthritis, Peyronie's disease, scleroderma, lupus, uh, Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Dolar syndrome, they have all kinds of different names, but they're all the same thing. They're cells that are, the fiber-making cells get sick, the connective tissue breaks down or becomes weak, or it's, the fibers start to deposit in the connective tissue. Accelerated aging is a type of connective tissue problem. That characteristic look that older folks have, or the, the younger folks are terrified of getting, is really a connective tissue problem, especially in the skin. You know the, the thin look, that uh, the saggy look that the skin will get as we get older, the, the look that everybody's terrified of getting, all the wrinkles and the, the laxity, the looseness in the skin? That's all a connective tissue problem, you guys. That's not really a skin problem per se. You can rub all the darn wrinkle cream you want on your skin, and you can always tell an ignorant skincare company or an ignorant skincare anybody who will tell you to rub this cream on and your wrinkles will go away, with a couple exceptions. Vitamin C is an exception. That's why I love using vitamin C in skincare products. Vitamin A is an exception. But with the exception of vitamin C and vitamin A, you're really not going to get any connective tissue benefits by rubbing a cream on your skin, with the exception of vitamin A and vitamin C. That's why I consider those to be so important. Aside from vitamin A and vitamin C, most skincare products are only working on the surface of the skin. It's like a candy coating on top of the connective tissue, the loose skin that people get as they get older and the shriveling and the general kind of disintegration that occurs as our body get, bodies get older is really a connective tissue problem. It's like the opposite of fibrosis. Fibrosis, sarcoidosis, fibroid cysts, these are too much connective tissue. Keloid, scarring, these are all signs of too much connective tissue. Accelerated aging or aging in general, the breakdown in our bodies that we associate with the aging process, that's the opposite problem. That's not enough connective tissue being built up. Instead of too much fibers, you got too little. Instead of growths, you have dissolution. You have dissolving. Connective tissue dissolution. Connective tissue dissolving. Think Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting. I'm melting. It's basically what happens. We melt. And that melting is a type of connective tissue a connective tissue, disintegr uh, connective tissue uh, disintegration. Connective tissue dissolution. Dissolution dissolving is probably the most, one of anyway, important elements when it comes to all degenerative diseases. All 
all degenerative diseases, which are by definition diseases that do not improve. A degenerative disease is a disease that does not resolve itself. Ordinarily, the body, as we've said so many times, we say every day at the beginning of the program, the body is a regenerating system. It regenerates. A degenerative disease is when it doesn't regenerate, it doesn't heal. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And almost all degenerative diseases, which by the way, by the way, make up 80% of our healthcare costs and our healthcare problems are all related to degenerative diseases. And degenerative diseases have at their core an eye melting component, a connective tissue dissolution component. And aging, at least from a structural standpoint, is a type of degenerative condition, pretty much by definition. At the core of the aging process and at the core of degenerative disease, you find fiber cells not making enough fibers. Instead of too much fibers, they're not making enough fibers. And why are cells not making enough fibers? Same reason they make too much fibers. They're starved, they're suffocated, and they're toxic, period. Oh, why hasn't your doctor told you this? Why hasn't your doctor said any of this? Why do you have to listen to this on a, hear this from a pharmacist on the radio? Why isn't the doctor say, well, you know, you got a connective tissue disease, but you got sick fibroblasts. Your fibroblasts, the fiber making cells, are starved and they're suffocated and they're toxic. Why hasn't your doctor told you this? Because he can't do anything about it. The medical model is impotent at the level of a cell. Doctors and drugs and pharmacists and surgeries and insurance companies and Kaiser Permanente can do nothing to feed a cell, to breathe a cell, or to detoxify a cell. And at the level of our poor, little, sad, sick, fiber-making cell, the true workhorse of the body, folks, remember the body is 40% connective tissue fibers, another 80% muscle tissue. Between the, the fibers, between the muscle tissue and the connective tissue, the cells that are making the stuff make 80% of our body. And if the cells that are making the stuff, the fibroblasts, fiber-making cells, or the myoblasts, the muscle-making cells, are sick and they're starving and toxic, big problems are going to result, and there's not a single drug on planet Earth that can help. There's not a single surgical procedure on planet Earth can, that can help. There's not a single doctor or pharmacist or insurance company that can help. But you know what? We don't need them. We don't need pharmacists. We don't need doctors. We don't need drugs. We don't need insurance companies. We can do it all ourselves. Connective tissue comes from the same place everything else comes from. Food, raw materials, protein, essential fats, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, and throw in a little bit of oxygen. Make sure there's no toxicity in the body, especially coming in from drugs and sugar. Those are the two, probably the two most important places where toxins enter into the body through sugar and through drugs. And your connective tissue will take care of its own. Fibroblasts do their business just fine. I read somebody put a post, uh, put a post on Facebook yesterday. He said, use the nutrients and get the heck out of the way. Give the body the nutrients and get the heck out of the way. Now, throw an oxygen in there. And then, of course, avoiding toxicity as well. All right. Lots more to say. Uh, we'll finish up when we come back from our break, and then we'll take your phone calls. 855-660-4261 is our number on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. All right. Welcome back to the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're one of the folks who received a, uh, a Omega-6 healing cream, my Omega-6 wound healing cream, love to hear how it's working out for you. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. If you haven't gotten... A sample jar yet? You can also send an email, Ben at KSCO.com. I'm, I'm out of samples now. I'm uh, waiting to make up some more. I'm waiting for some raw materials. So uh, it's just send an email. We'll put you on the waiting list. But if you've gotten it, I'd like to hear how it's working out for you. If you're using it on wounds, or uh, it's great for acne scars. It's great to prevent acne scars. It can actually help heal zits, heal pimples. Although I don't know. If, uh, well, you can try it on on whiteheads and blackheads. More for uh, healing, uh, healing uh, pimples once the once the blemish starts to resolve itself. In any case, you can use it on wounds. You can use it as an anti-aging product. Great for feet. Great for any hard, rough, dry skin. Uh, send in, send me an email, Ben at ksco.com. Put your address and your phone number, uh, or just your address. I don't need your phone number. Uh, just put your address, uh, but, but but list your address on the email in a way that I can copy and paste onto my label making program. You know, just like uh, your name on the top line, address second line, and. Uh, Etc. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. If you have gotten a, uh, the product, I'd love to uh, get an email from you. Just a quick email. Let me know how it worked out for you. If it worked really well for you, and you want some more, send me a testimonial letter. I'm, a, I'm collecting testimonial letters, and then uh, I'll send you out another jar or two. Uh, if you really liked it, if it really worked well for you. So uh, just send. Me, obviously, if uh, only send me a testimonial letter if it worked really well for you. I've been I've been making this product now for a long time, so. 
pretty sure you're going to get good results, but I'd like to, I'd like to get uh, some specific stories that I can keep in my file. Ben at KSCO.com is my email. You can always send uh, questions and comments to the same email, Ben at KSCO.com. I'm very behind in responding to my emails. If you have questions and you don't want to go on the air, you can send me an email, but please put your phone number on the emails if you have questions so I don't have to write long long screeds to reply back to emails. It's much easier for me to have a conversation with you. And that's Ben at KSCO.com. Okay, let's see. There's a couple more things I want to say. You know what? We'll hang on to this for tomorrow. We'll continue talking. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow about depression. I want to talk about Robin Williams, and I'll give you some of my, some, uh, some of the, some, my take on what happened with Robin Williams. You know, he had heart surgery. Uh, before his depression, and, and as any cardiac nurse will tell you, or cardiologist will tell you, after you have heart surgery, it's not uncommon to be depressed. You're confronting your mortality in a very significant way when you have have heart surgery, and and depression is just part and parcel with the with the with the program. It comes with the program, basically. Uh, not to mention the fact that you have poor circulation. You tend to have poor circulation going to the brain. There's a lot of reasons why heart disease and heart surgery, heart surgical procedures can lead to depression. We'll talk about that. I'm sure well, we'll talk about all that tomorrow uh, as we continue talking about, uh, we'll continue talking about connective tissue diseases on the next day. So tomorrow we'll talk about depression and then uh, we'll talk uh, continue talking about connective tissue diseases and a couple of hormone, hormones and the hormonal relationship between connective tissue disease, or the hormonal connection to connective tissue disease. And then we'll talk about a really interesting hormone that it's kind of a strange hormone that you don't hear people talking about a lot. Uh, it's one that was discovered very recently, and it has a, a key relationship, a key connection to the nutrient arginine, and it is also involved not just in helping with uh, support connective tissue health, but it's also involved in cardiovascular health, lowering blood pressure, very important for the health of the heart, also important for the health for uh, libido and for sexual performance. It's all, it's all related to arginine, and we will uh, talk about that not tomorrow, but the next day. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about depression. Okay, 855-660-4261 is our number. If you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, call 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com and click on the Join the Team link and somebody will get back to you with information. Let's take our first phone call of the day. Cindy in Virginia, what's going on? Welcome to the Brightside. Cindy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I flipped my... It, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm calling to see while I am trying to heal my digestive process. Okay, uh, digestive system. system. Yeah, di um, you have me doing that, and um, I'm taking insulin. Okay, you're taking your, you're injecting yourself with insulin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm doing that a lot. It's six shots a day. I'm a type one. Okay. Um, I've noticed looking at blood sugars because I know how to do that. <laughs> with certain foods, sometimes it goes high, sometimes it goes low. Yeah, that's good. Um, but, that's good that you're noticing I, that. I do notice it, but I don't know how to adjust the insulin, and I can't go to my endocrinologist and ask him what to do. He's not well, going to know what to do. <laughs> well, first of all, you don't want to be playing around with your dose. Insulin is really, really powerful stuff, really powerful stuff. It may be among the most powerful. It's not really a drug. It's a hormone, and it's among the most powerful hormones in the body. May be the most powerful hormone in the body, actually, when all is said and done. So you don't want to be playing around too much with your dose of insulin. What you should be doing is playing around with your food. The foods that spike your blood sugar are foods that you want to stay away from, and you know the suspects. There's no real reason. There's no real need for any of those foods, Cindy. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a food Nazi here, and I'm not trying to be, you know, some kind of food guru. Uh, you know, there's no judgment that's involved. But the foods that spike your insulin are foods that you don't need. They're foods that you might want. They're foods that might taste good, you know, but they're not foods that you absolutely have to have. Uh, and I'm thinking potatoes and pasta and rice and bread and cereals and fruit juice, etc. There's no real need for any of those foods. So my opinion, don't play around with your insulin. Play around with the food and try staying away from those problem foods. Now, if you really want to have those foods, eat smaller amounts of those foods and support your insulin. And as for anybody out there who's on insulin, you can make, your ins you can make the insulin you're using stronger and more potent so you don't need as much. And there's a couple of, well, there's a few really wonderful nutrients for potentizing insulin, for strengthening your insulin. Chromium and vanadium and the sweeties from Longevity are, are the ultimate nutrients, micronutrients for supporting insulin. And you should be using the sweeties after all meals, two or three after all meals. That will make your insulin stronger and you won't need as much insulin. There's another nutrient called alpha lipoic acid. I'm sure you've heard of that. You want about 400 milligrams a day, or you can take a couple hundred milligrams after your meals. That, too, 
will potentize or strengthen your insulin. The amino acids taurine and arginine will also potentize and strengthen your insulin. Maybe 100 milligrams of taurine, maybe 500 milligrams or so of arginine a couple of times a day or after meals. That can help uh, make your insulin stronger. And then essential fatty acids like the ultimate EFAs, omega-3 essential fatty acids in particular can make your insulin stronger too. So in my opinion, you don't want to be playing around with your insulin as much as you want to be playing around with the foods you're eating and then using nutritional supplements to potentize your insulin. And I know you've probably been told because you have type 1 diabetes that you're going to be on insulin the rest of your life. And this is what they tell type 1 diabetics. Type 1 diabetes is distinguished from type 2 diabetes because type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body attacks the pancreas. And type 2 diabetes is more like a long term degenerative kind of condition. Nonetheless, type 1 diabetes, you can, believe it or not, you can regenerate your beta cells in your pancreas, can regenerate. They used to say no, but now they know that you can. You can make your, uh, you can make your pancreas secrete more insulin, and you can definitely support your uh, pancreatic health and, and type 1 diabetes without having to rely on drugs over time. But you've got to focus on nutrition, and you've got to focus on foods that are causing digestive problems. Type 1 diabetes is a condition, an autoimmune condition, which means it's got a di major digestive component, especially when it comes to the microbiome, which is the fancy schmancy way of saying the intest uh, uh, intestinal bacteria. So in addition to everything we just talked about, make sure you're using your, I'm sure you are already, but if you're not, make sure you're on the bioluminitely essence and eating lots of fermented foods. And keeping your calories down too. And, more, and of course, if you're on the uh, Healthy Star Pack and getting your Mighty 90 nutrients, it's going to be much easier to keep your calories down. Calorie restriction, adequate nutrition, the CRAN diet. I hope that helps, Cindy. Oh, by the way, the B vitamins yeah. are also very important for sugar metabolism and supporting insulin. So sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine after your meals is a good idea, too. Hope we helped you, Cindy. Thanks so much for your call. I'm going to I'm gonna let you go and we'll move on. And uh, please call back if you have any more questions. 855-660-4261 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. If you guys want to try a fast, don't do it without your Swero V and Amasai from Beyond Organics. I did a fast yesterday, sipped on my Swero V, super easy. Swero V is a great source of electrolytes and minerals. Um, I'm using this, the Swero V Citrus, there's also one unflavored, and then the uh, Amasai Kefir uh, drink it's, is also a good source of probiotics and a good source of minerals as well as protein. You can find out all about them at brightsideben.com, pull down on the shopping cart, look for the Swero V or the Amasai and the Amasai from Beyond Organics. And if you're, while you're at it, check out the cheese, the artisan cheddar cheese. I haven't tried the other cheeses. The cheddar cheese is awesome. And once you start eating this uh, artisan cheddar cheese, probiotic enriched artisan cheddar cheese from Beyond Organics, you're not going to want regular cheese again. Trust me. And I've been a cheese fan for a lot of years, and I don't want to even go near my vitamin cottage cheddar cheese once I've, uh, as long as I have my, my uh, Jordan Rubin Beyond Organic Probiotic Enriched Artisan Cheddar Cheese. Yum, yum. You can find out all about it at brightsideben.com. Pull down on the shopping cart. You can also click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com for a one-time $10 fee. Start yourself a longevity business. Help me and my mission to educate the world about the importance and the power of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, John in Michigan, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Hello. Hello, hello. How you doing, man? Yeah, Ben, uh, this has to do with leg cramps, bike riding, uh, long distance. Right. Uh, electrolytes. Electro yeah, electrolytes and electrical vitamins, too, B vitamins especially. B -vitamins. Uh, if you drink, yeah, if you're drinking a lot of water, and most people are when they're doing bike racing or doing exercise, you're going you're gonna to lose your electrolytes. You're going to sweat them out. You're going to pee them out. And when you run deficient electrolytes, cramping is the ultimate result. And that's pretty much what you want to regard all cramping as, uh, whether it's nighttime cramping, uh, night cramps that people get, or uh, cramps that are related to athletic performance. Electrolytes, meaning potassium, calcium, magnesium, all the, all the electrical minerals that you get in the Swero V and the Amasai and the, and the uh, Ultimate Classic and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. In fact, that's, that's, the, that's Dr. Wallach's claim to fame, is understanding the importance of electric, liquid electrolytes. Uh, sugar will mess it up, so don't drink any sugar, and Diet Coke can do the same thing, so pretty much want to stay away from that. And then high doses of the B-complex. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is pretty much the best post-exercise or during your workout 
uh, uh, supplement that I know of. It's a great source of liquid B vitamins as well as liquid electrolytes. And those are the two things that you want to think about. You said, you said electric vitamins too. Is the, yeah, the B vitamins are, I call them electric vitamins okay. because they, they help make, they help cells make electrical energy. The B vitamins are actually the carrying force for, uh, energy, for the production of energy. They turn sugar into energy. Sugar energy gets carried and it's really cool how it happens, but I'm not going to get into it. The electrical energy in sugar it combines with oxygen and it gets carried via the B complex, the, v, the B vitamins, in order to power or to fuel a cell. So the B vitamins are almost like a mediator for electrical energy. I call them electrical vitamins. That's why they're found in living foods. The B vitamins are your living food vitamins, sprouts and vegetables and, and meats, which used to be living. Those are the best sort eggs. Those are the best sources of B vitamins because the B vitamins are the vitamins of life, of electricity. Electricity is life. So B vitamins and electrolytes, John. I appreciate that, Ben. Sure. Take care, man. God bless. All right, let's move on to Matthew in Texas. What's going on, my friend? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thanks for your program. I, I was wondering, uh, I've got a dermatologist appointment here in, uh, next month. Why? And, uh, why, why? Well, I used We're... to be construction worker and have uh, those little bit of rough spots on top of your ears. Rough spots uh, on the ears? Were you doing construction with your ears? How come... No, I mean, just being exposed to the sun. <laughs> okay. All well. right, I'm just teasing you. Here's the deal. Yeah. You don't have a skin. You don't have a skin condition, even though it's showing up on the skin. By the time you see roughness or dryness or patches or vitiligo or, or dark spots or whatever on the skin, it's over. That's the end of it. There's a biochemical breakdown that's occurring in the body, and it's causing changes to occur on the skin. But the problem is not the skin any more than if you have rotting leaves on the tr on your tree. The problem is in the leaves. You know what I'm saying? If you if you go outside yeah. in your front lawn and you see a bunch of rotting leaves, is it a leaf problem or is it a tree problem? Well, obviously it's not a leaf problem. The leaf is just where the where it's showing up. And so your uh, problem in the ear sounds to me like uh, something called eczema. You probably heard of that. A couple things that you want to think about. Uh, I'll tell you how to handle it topically here in a moment, just for the just cosmetically and superficially. But from a biochemical perspective, two things to think about with eczema: number one, fats, and number two, the digestive system, and they are connected because fat malabsorption or fat breakdown, uh, fatty uh, problems breaking down fats occurs when you have digestive issues. So first and foremost, look to problem foods. If you have, if this condition is uh, significant enough that you're going to a dermatologist, by the way, a dermatologist can do absolutely nothing to help you except suppress uh, the immune system and shut, uh, suppress inflammation and he'll give you a steroid cream. That's what he'll give you. And, and that's all you can do. Well, I go for my, you know, once a year checkup. It's, uh, that's what I'm going for. And that's okay. Right. right. Well, no, I don't want to go off, uh, digress too much. I just want to get to the point here. Number one, right. look, look to problem foods, okay? If you have any digestive issues, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, heartburn, that's great. That is powerful data for you because that's going to make it easier for you to link your issues to foods. If you don't have those, look for them because they're probably there. If you still can't find them, look to flare-ups in your skin. Either way, whether it's food or whether it's flare-ups in the skin, you want to somehow connect the issue, your, your problem, with specific foods you're eating and then eliminate those foods. Then you want to start to patch up the digestive system using the probiotics, the Biolumin Nightly Essence from Longevity, and probably the Z-Radical as well, and it wouldn't hurt you to start to uh, get yourself on the healthy start pack. Last but most certainly not least, there's a very important component between, a very important relationship between fat metabolism and fatty vitamins and minerals for that matter, which are all, uh, which are processed through the fat system, the fat metabolizing system, and skin conditions like eczema. So vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day. Vitamin E, 400 international units a day. The ultimate essential fatty acids, I'd be using nine of them a day, three in the morning, three at night, and three in the afternoon. And then uh, make sure you're taking your fatty vitamins and your essential fatty acids with your ultimate enzymes, which will help you process those fats, and use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Uh, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate is not a bad idea. You might also want to try the ultimate selenium, 200 to 400 micrograms a day. If you want something topical, you can use zinc oxide topically, and that will help soothe the skin a little bit. You can also use, uh, I'll tell you what, why don't you send me an email, ben at ksco.com, and I'll send you my omega-6 wound healing cream, which also works on eczema. Uh, just give me a couple of, uh, just give me a week or so to get it out to you. But in the meantime, you might want to use some zinc oxide cream topically on the skin. Okay, does that help you, Matthew? Uh, yes, and that's the same as him. Like, he has burned them off with a nit nitrogen little gun. That's the uh, same. Uh, is he, he's, he's burning off the rough patches? Yes. Well, if he's burning off the rough patches, then they're not patches. They're, it's gross. 
Patches are really when you have blank skin, when your skin's not growing fast enough. And the way you're describing it, the skin's growing too fast. So it's the same idea, though. Uh, it, you may also have a di uh, insulin component. There may be some prediabetes involved. Whenever skin cells grow or any cells grow out of control, uh, there's, on, there, uh, there's oftentimes a diabetes or insulin condition. Are you diabetic or prediabetic or anything along those lines? Uh, I guess I'm probably pre-diabetic. I'm a little bit overweight right now, but okay. Uh, Chances are you. I, I, I listen to your program quite a bit, so I'll just get on your regiment. There you <laughs> go, buddy. That'll that'll be good for whatever ails you, Matthew. And also focus on the pre-diabetes issue too. Okay. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Right, thank you. Yeah, any kind of skin growth, skin tags, cysts, fibroids, they're all related to insulin. They probably have an estrogen component, as we'll talk about here in, in a couple of days. But think insulin first and foremost, blood sugar issues. And given the fact that we all are pre-diabetic, most of us anyway are pre-diabetic, no matter what our diagnosis is, uh, chances are pretty good that by using the Sweeties and B vitamins and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and weaning yourself off of insulin-spiking foods, which, as I was saying earlier today, are really unnecessary, you can go a long way towards improving skin growth and fibroids and cysts, et cetera. All right, uh, Tai Taiwan. Is that how you say your name? Taiwan. Taiwan. That's Taiwan. Taiwan. How you doing, Taiwan? What's going on, man? We got about a minute. I'm doing super fantastic. Uh, right. Thinking about um, Lou Gehrig's disease and all of okay. these ice bucket water challenges to bring awareness oh, yeah. to the issue. And I want to know what do we have to address that? We got lots we address. ALS is an auto uh, autoimmune disease, and like all autoimmune diseases, here's the key. There's lots of different ones. I think there's 120 or 130 autoimmune diseases. Those are diseases where the immune system goes haywire and attacks itself, attacks us instead of attacking the enemy. Always, 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 always focus on where 80% of our immune system is located, which is the digestive tract. If you have any immune system problems, including autoimmunity, and 80% of, of your immune system is located in the digestive tract, it's just common sense. It's not doctor sense, it's common sense to focus on the digestive system. That means food and digestion. I've been watching these, these uh, challenges, and uh, that, uh, these ALS challenges. Football players will dump cold water on their heads. You don't need to dump cold water on your head, and you don't need to challenge. If you have ALS, and by the way, football players are four times as likely to get ALS as, as other folks. At least that's what they said on, on the NFL network. That's wow. because, because trauma is one of the ways that the body breaks down. Now, degenerative diseases uh, degenerative diseases are not the same as trauma-related diseases, but it's the same idea in terms of breakdown, in terms of, in terms of fixing the body up. Focus on... Uh, we got to... Can you uh, let, let him go there? We got a bad echo. Uh, in any case, focus on digestive health. Focus on keeping the immune system quiet. Even fasting for one day can make a di big difference in your symptoms if you have ALS or any autoimmune condition. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Sorry if we left you on hold. Uh, we'll get your calls tomorrow. Call first thing. Tell our call screener we left you on hold. We'll get you first up. Tomorrow we'll continue talk. Well, tomorrow we'll talk about depression and uh, some of the hormone connections to depression. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.